have always really been an issue for him in his time in Pittsburgh. And obviously now when you look back at the trade, <laughs> it, it's laughable. It really is. And we still haven't seen Shane Boz make his way to Tampa yet. And he is now a top 100 prospect. The Pirates 2018-2017 uh, first round draft choice. It's it's a shame looking back on it, but the reality is is it was one of the splashiest trades in franchise history, and it honestly <clears throat> was the first time Pittsburgh rallied around the Pirates since 2015 after the Archer trade and his first start in Pittsburgh on that electric night against the Cardinals where you had fans chanting Archer's name, where you had them on their feet for uh, two straight counts. That was such a fun night in Pittsburgh, and that's the last real time that there was true excitement, and the stadium was full and electric. Now, when I think back to 2019, some of the fun moments we had, uh, Cole Tucker's home run in his debut, I mean, didn't have a big crowd for that. Uh, The the Padres come back, they were sort of out of it at that point. Uh, The Cubs walk off, uh, Kevin Newman grounded the ball up the middle, but they were definitely out of it at that point. I mean, when Cole Tucker is home run, they were 12-6 and six and one of the best teams in the NL at that point. But the reality is, is 2018, uh, at the deadline, the Archer trade, the Archer debut, that was when Pittsburgh had themselves falling back in love with the Pirates. And just think about the rotation at that point. And it was so exciting to have to have Archer in the rotation. When, when you had Jamison Tyone. When you had Trevor Williams on the role that he was on. You had Joe Musgrove. You had a Von Nova. You had Chris Archer. That, that rotation was so fun to watch in 2018. And that 2018 team was fun to watch. They were just one win a month and 18 away from making the playoffs. And that's why I was so bullish on the team last year until... I don't know, a bomb went off at the All-Star break, and it just <laughs> went the Pirates scattering in a million different directions. But here we are, hopefully about to enter into a 2020 season in which there is baseball, in which it's undoubtedly going to be a season unlike anything we've ever seen and unlike anything we are going to ever see. And a season where there's likely going to be 14 playoff teams. In a season where there could be as little as 48 games. In a season where first-time manager Derek Shelton is about to take the reins of this Pirates team. In a season where this young team is hungry and wanting to win. In a season where 20% of the games are going to be against the Tigers and the Royals. Is it plausible to think this team can make the playoffs in 2020? even without Chris Archer? The the question then becomes, who's going to take that fifth and final rotation spot? And Derek Shelton has said, maybe they might go to an opener there. The opener strategy didn't really work outside of the first two from uh, Montana de Rapa last year. But when, when you look at it as a whole, I like Stephen Brault more so for making the rotation over Chad Cole. And it's just so surprising to me, the the sort of lack of respect that Stephen Brault gets. I mean, him and Musgrove were the two best pitchers his team had last year. And it really appeared that Brault was not going to make the rotation coming out of, if there was a regular season, A, because he was hurt, and B, because it, they, they liked Holland more than Brault. But I, I would say go with Brault in the rotation and Cole out of the bullpen. And this rotation still has the potential to be good. And it definitely hurts. No Archer, no Tyone. I mean, just think about the rotation with them. You would have J-Mo, you'd have Joe, Trevor, Archer, and you can go with Holland at the end of that rotation. Or Keller. Or Cole. Or Brault. And you also have depth depth options like Cody Potts. Like JT Brubaker, like James Marvel. Teams are obviously going to be hoarding pitching when it comes to the the season coming up. So I mean, there's not going to be much external options for the Pirates to go to. But I would definitely expect Stephen Brault to win that fifth and final uh, rotation spot 
uh, if and when spring training 2.0 gets underway here. After struggling during his professional career in the States, a former third-round draft pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates is having a great season in the KBO. In the third round of the 2010 MLB Draft, the Pittsburgh Pirates selected outfitter Mel Rojas Jr. Drafted out of Wabash Valley College, the Indianapolis native quickly signed with the Pirates and was playing professional baseball with a short-season state college spikes before the end of that summer. Rojas Jr. would play his first full professional season in 2011, spending the entire season with the low-A West Virginia Power. Despite struggling to the tune of a 246 average, 312 on base, 335 <clears throat> slugging, and a WRC plus of 79, he was promoted to high A Bradenton for 2012. With the Marauders, Rojas' Jr.'s struggles would continue. He slashed for just a 245 average, 303 on base, 354 slugging, to go with a WRC plus of 86. Again, Rojas Jr. saw a promotion the following season as he was promoted to double-A Altoona with the curve. He put together a pair of strong seasons. He posted a WRC Plus of 103 in 2013 and 133 WRC Plus in 2014. 53 games into his 2014 campaign, Rojas Jr. was promoted to triple-A Indianapolis. Playing for his hometown team, he hit for a 277 average, 363 on base, 405 slugging to go with a 115 WRC Plus. At this point, he appeared to be entering the 2015 season on the doorstep of the MLB level. Unfortunately, that is not how things would work out. Rojas Jr. struggled so mightily at AAA in 2015 that he was eventually sent back to AA. This was a real blow as he appeared to have turned the corner as a hitter in the previous two seasons. After starting the 2016 season with the AAA Indianapolis Indians, Rojas Jr.'s Pittsburgh Pirates career would end. This end came on May 9, 2016, when he was traded to the Atlanta Braves for cash considerations. Upon arriving in Atlanta's system, Rojas Jr. was assigned to the AA level. He never would reach the MLB during his career. Rojas Jr. is now in his third season playing in the KBO. Thus far, this season three has been one of the best yet for the ex-Pittsburgh Pirates farmhand. After starting the 2017 season at the AAA level with the Braves, Rojas Jr. signed with the KT Wiz of the KBO on June 12, 2017. In his KBO debut, Rojas Jr. quickly made an impact, batting for a 301 average, 351 OBP, 560 slugging line to go with a 125 WRC plus and 18 home runs in 83 games. Still, with the KT Wiz, Rojas Jr. hit for a 305 average, 388 on base, 590 slugging line, with a 139 WRC+, 11% walk rate, and 43 home runs in 2018. Then in 2019, he slashed for a 322 average, 381 on base, 530 slugging, with a 148 WRC+, 8.5% walk rate, and he smacked 24 home runs. Through his first 24 games, he's had 108 plate appearances in 2020, Rojas Jr. is continuing his upward trajectory. As of Tuesday afternoon, he owned a 408 average, 454 on base, 714 slugging line, and a 198 WRC+. He has already hit 8 home runs, which is the second most in the league, and his isolated power is a new career best 306. Rojas Jr. has gone from minor league farmhand to a KBO slugging star. While his professional career in the States did not work out for him, Rojas Jr. continues to appear to have found a good home in the KBO. Hopefully, he will continue to find success in South Korea and continue to blossom into one of the best players in the league. And over the past month, I have watched just about every KBO game on ESPN. And it's been fun to watch Mel Rojas Jr. play for the KT Wiz only former pirate that has appeared on ESPN. Uh, Nick Kingham is with the SK Wyverns, uh, the second worst team in the league, so they haven't been on ESPN all too much. Um, and in the Wyverns' time on ESPN, Nick Kingham has not been on the mound. But nevertheless, uh, Mel Ro- Rojas Jr., and w- when I think about it, I, I remember this offseason hearing rumblings about Rojas Jr., was considering coming back uh, to the major leagues 
if if and when he had uh the opportunity to have a guaranteed major league contract from what i remember um he was offered uh, like a minor league contract no guarantee to make the roster uh and he wasn't about to do that now uh, from guys that have made their way back from the KBO to the MLB, there's really only two two places you can point to that. Uh, and that's with the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, first with Eric Thames. Uh, coming over back over from, from the KBO, he played with the NC Dinos for a couple years and came back and turned himself into a slugger now with the Washington Nationals. Uh, the other... One is Josh Lindblom. He won the Korean Series with the Doosan Bears last year, was MVP of the league, and the Brewers signed him to a three-year guaranteed money deal. Now, I feel like the Josh Lindblom <clears throat> experiment, per se, is, is going to be crucial to any pitchers that go over to the KBO and want to come back. Uh, some successful guys are there right now. Eric Yokish with the QM Heroes has been dominant. Um, some other guys know Dan Straley of the Lotte Giants wants to work his way back. Uh, you have guys like Mike Wright Jr. over there, Tyler Wilson, Casey Kelly, all these guys. And, you know, when players used to go over to Korea, when they went over to Asia, whether whether it be Japan or Korea, not many players go to the CPBL, but uh, either the KBO or the NPB. Uh, it was a, sort of a death sentence for their careers. But... Thames and Limbloom are trying to prove that wrong. And Mel Rojas Jr., I'm not sure how old he is. Uh, let me just do a quick Google search on that. But I wouldn't be surprised if he does have a good season this year if a team is willing to bring him back on a guaranteed Major League deal. Mel Rojas Jr. is only 30 years old. So he definitely does have you know, plenty of mileage left on him. He's not a pitcher, but he, he does have some years ahead of him still. Let's see what what's his birthday? Um, May twenty fourth. So he's already turned thirty. So he he'll be thirty one at some point during next season. And when you look across the league of potential guys that could make the jump from the KBO back to the MLB, you see a Mel Rojas Jr. But the, the the number one player to me is he plays for the LG Twins. His name is Roberto Ramos, twenty five years old. Really not at all the stereotypical way of how players have transitioned from the MLB to the KBO. Uh, similarly to Rojas Jr., Ramos never played in the MLB. He hit 30 some home runs for the Rockies last year in Albuquerque. Now, it is Albuquerque, but he played in the Fall League. Um, and, and, that, and then he decided to go over to the KBO, which, honestly, for any of the players that, like, decided, you know, my time in the MLB or a state side is done for now, I want to go to Korea... The, the the players that made that decision made a pretty darn good decision, especially a guy like Roberto Ramos, who, I mean, little did you know that the pandemic would hit, but with all these cuts going around uh, in the minors and, I mean, likely no minor league season, potentially no major league season, he's found himself at home with the LG Twins, and I, I think he is due to come back uh, to the majors at some point, a big, powerful, slugging player. And the KBO has been definitely a treat to watch. I would suggest you watch it. I get up every morning to watch it live, but I know they do do re-airs. Uh, I get like 2.30 in the afternoon for the, the weekday games. Don't believe they do that for the week uh, weekday games. Weekend, my bad. Uh, but I've got myself into the league a little bit, and, and it's been fun. NC Diners are the best team in the league. Five teams make the playoffs. And the interesting thing, too, about the KBO is the number one seed automatic like buy to the Korean series which is the World Series uh, for them but uh yeah that's just gonna about do it for our show I just wanted to thank everyone for tuning in uh I know it's it's been a struggle here without baseball stateside there was the uh collegiate summer baseball invitational the other night on ESPN2 so that was fun to watch but the draft is Wednesday this is going to be one of the biggest nights uh, in this franchise's history if they want to be a competitive team sometime soon. There's seven picks, three in the top 45. It's going to be a big night for the Buccos and for Ben Charrington, for this city, for this franchise. Appreciate you all for tuning in and would love if you could give me a follow on Instagram.
at Bucks Dugout. It's been a pleasure doing this again. We'll be back here same time, same place on Saturday. This has been Bucko Booth. I'm Benson Fector. Have a great weekend.